Hello everyone, I hope you are ready. So welcome to our Microsoft Teams behind the scene webinar. First things first, your presenters today are my humble self, Matja Hanzic. Uh, I'm a product development lead here at Siskit. Uh, I've been doing it for at least five years that I can count. Uh, and I've been with SharePoint since uh, 2007. So when it comes to permissions, I've basically seen it all. And with me is Mario. So Mario, say hello. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mario uh, and I started working with SharePoint seven years ago as a developer. And now I'm a product owner for two of our products, uh, Syskit Security Manager and uh, Syskit Insights. Matija. Leo. So we are from Syskit. It's a software company in Zagreb and we do ultimate SharePoint admin tools. So let's get to the webinar agenda. So to, today we are going to talk about Microsoft Teams. First we are going to do a quick overview and then we are going to try to answer some of the questions. How do I create a team? Who can create a team? What actually happens when you create a team? What, what goes around under the covers? How does it communicate with the rest of the Office 365 products? We'll have a short demo and we'll also cover in detail how, how do actually guests and guest access work in Microsoft Teams. At the end, uh, Mario will show you a Syskit Security Manager demo and he will focus on showing you how actually Syskit Security Manager can help you to deal with the problems that we'll cover today. So uh, also you will have uh, an ability to download the slide deck and the webinar. You'll get an email notification and if you have any questions, we have sometimes reserved at the end of the webinar. So make sure to ask your questions and they'll be answered at the end. Okay, let's get started. So a quick overview. Uh, so basically, Microsoft Teams is an all-in-one place, meaning it connects different Office 365 products. So you have the chat that was basically Skype. You have files which are stored in SharePoint. You have Outlook, meaning you have your calendar and meetings at a single place. And you also have different services like OneNote, Planner, Power BI, etc. And besides all of that, you also have the ability to customize your teams. You can do stuff like tabs and in tabs you can place your own applications with your own custom logics. You can also have connectors. Uh, connectors allow you to connect to third party services to receive notifications. And I always love a good integration with other services. And the last ones are bots. So bots are like connectors, but even more advanced because they work two way. You can even use uh, natural language and speak to a bot. And if it's implemented correctly, you can actually do a lot of stuff with bots. And in general, that's what Microsoft Teams is. And why we are here is because Microsoft Teams is actually quite popular. And you can see some figures here. And these are figures from September this year. And you can see 3,200 3, uh, organizations using Teams. And that's a huge increase. So a lot of customers are moving to Teams and it's quite popular. So the first question that uh, we must ask ourselves is how do I even create a team? So it depends, are you a user? If you are a user, you have two choices. Either you can use the desktop application, you just download it, install it, or you can use the browser application. And the process is pretty simple. You just click create a team, later you enter the team name and that's it. If you're an admin and you need to be a global admin, you can access the new Teams and Skype admin portal. And here you can get a list of all the teams in your environment and you can also create teams here. So we'll just quickly jump in and create one team that we can use for a demo. 
and here we are. So we have to go inside Teams and once it's open, we should see all the teams that I, as a current user, and you can see it here, am a member of. So you see here that I have a couple of teams, and now I'm going to create another one. So let's just name it Webinar Team, and we'll say this is a public team. So I have a choice regarding the privacy setting. Do I want to create a public team for anyone in your organization to join? Or do I want to have just a private team where I can show who are the members? And the last one is organization-wide. That's good for sending like news to an entire company. Uh, for this demo, we will use the public one. And I will show you later what's the exact impact of that. So I click Next. And basically, I can add members, okay, that this is an option. We'll just add one member so we can see it. And that's it. So your team has channels. Uh, when you create it, you have just one channel, but for now we'll just create two more channels so you can see how it works. We can just name them, let's say, my marketing. And the other one can be sales. So each channel has its own conversations, has its own files and wiki. And this is something that will look how it looks under the cover in the SharePoint side. But for now, it's important to notice that we have three channels. And let's place some documents inside. Okay, we've placed two documents here, and we'll place a couple of documents here that we'll use in the later demos. Oh, files, have to select the files, then I can check and drop them. And that's basically it. Our team is running, and we can start inviting other members, including guest users. So. Let's go back to the presentation. So we've created our team. So we've covered that. Uh, so you might ask yourself, so who can actually create a team? And the, the answer to that was, is by default anyone in the organization. And this is something that has good sides, but also bad sides. You can look at it from the IT department's point. Okay, I don't have to approve every site. I don't have to create every team. That's let's work for me. But it could also have some bad sites. Let's say naming conventions. You don't want somebody to name, uh, I don't know, a team's group like HR or CEO or something that's sensitive if he's actually not the person that he's claiming to be. Uh, content duplications, you do not want to have a lot of sites that are dealing with the same same content. And also you want to have some data classification. Uh, so you have an option that you can actually restrict who can create a team. And this is done in a two-step process. First you have to create a security group for users who have the permissions to create teams. And the second one is to run a couple of PowerShell commands. I will not go over them here because they're not that important. You just pretty much copy paste them from the Microsoft article and run them. And the last option is that you can completely disable it and leave the creation permission just for your administrators. So we actually created a team as an admin and you might ask yourself, what has actually happened when I created the team? What did I get? So a couple of things that I got. It works with other Office 365 products, and you have to keep it in mind all the time. So you, for the first thing is you got an Office 365 group. 
Also, you got a SharePoint Online site, and the site actually you can take a look at this screenshot and you get a, a pretty good idea how the permissions work on that site. So the site, once it's created, it creates SharePoint groups, the standard groups that you, that you will see on any Office 365 site or any modern site. So it has members, owners, and visitors. And inside the SharePoint groups, you actually have your team groups and the owners of the team groups will go in the SharePoint owners and in the SharePoint group members will go your team members. So that's important to keep in mind. And remember, did you remember when I created the team that I selected, uh, it's public. So anyone can join it. And this is why you can see everyone except in external users here. This is how SharePoint allows anyone from your company to access the files that are stored in SharePoint that belong to this team. So the next thing that you get is an exchange online shared mailbox. It's pretty much a standard mailbox that you get with any Office 365 group. And you get other stuff like OneNote and integration with Planet, Powered BI. You can add your own apps and so on. One good question would be, when I create a team, does it have to be from scratch? Or I already have an Office 365 group, can I just convert it to a team? And the answer is yes, you can just convert an existing Office 365 group to a team. And another question that I've heard a couple of times is, can I go back? OK, I've created a team, but I don't want a team. I just want a group. And unfortunately, the answer is no. So if you went from Office 365 group to a team, you cannot go back. Uh, let's jump in back into SharePoint and take a quick look what actually happened when I created all of my team. So the first one that I mentioned is that you got, and I just have to log in back in. So you got your security group. So the team name was webinar. So if I go into Azure Active Directory under the groups, I will see that a new group appeared. Here it is. So Azure Active Directory is the foundation of everything in Office 365. So it's expected that you will see a group here. The next thing that you got is an Office 365 group. And we can validate that by going to the Office 365 admin portal. And under the groups, oh, refresh, refresh, login, tends to happen. Oh, here we go. And once again, you'll see that we have an Office 365 group. Here it is. So that's another thing that you got. And I would like to show you your SharePoint site. OK, it's here. It's just like it's, it's webinar team, not webinar test team. That was the old one. And here you can see what actually happened when I created the team and when all the files that I uploaded go. So you can see that the files are appearing inside SharePoint because SharePoint is the actual place where the Microsoft Teams stores its content. And you might remember that I also create three channels. So if I go back here, you see three channels, general, marketing, and sales. And inside SharePoint, you have the documents library. And for each channel, you'll actually get a folder inside, inside the library. And when it comes to permissions, if you take a look at the permissions page, like I said before, inside the owners, oh, maybe not the owners. Oh, yeah, that's not showing. It's hidden. 
but inside the members you'll see so the first one that I checked was the Sherpa group and inside that is the actual Office 365 group and you can validate this if you check the actual account so that's definitely coming from Azure AD and that's how it looks from the SharePoint side. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. So the next important thing that I wanted to talk about was guest access. So you can invite anyone from the company to collaborate with you in the team and that's pretty much straightforward. But you can also invite external people that you work with to collaborate using Microsoft Teams. And this is where things get a little bit complicated. And partly it's because it is complicated and partly it's because Microsoft made it complicated. So the first thing is to distinguish between settings. Uh, Microsoft sometimes calls something external or external user. Sometimes he calls it guest or guest access. In Microsoft, in most cases, it's the same thing, but in the case of Microsoft Teams, external access, it means it's only for chat. So if you remember how the Microsoft Teams looks inside, it has the chat part. But so if you just want to chat or call with external users, then you have to go to the external users part of the SharePoint Admin Center, and there you can enable external access. But if you want to enable guest access, and that's a lot more than external access because guests actually become members of your teams. You're inviting them to access all the resources that are inside teams, including files and chat and channels. Then you have to enable the guest access inside the Microsoft Teams admin center. And who can you invite? Basically, you can invite anyone with an Office 365 subscription, but also you can invite pretty much anyone with any type of email. And that, that's pretty cool. So what can a guest user do? He can pretty much do everything that, that's, let's say, that a normal member should do. So he can participate in channels. He can see messages, see files and stuff like that. But he cannot do some, some things that a user or, or let's say our owner of a team should do like create new teams, create meetings, uh, add apps, configure team settings and stuff like that. And how to set up guest access? Oh, this, this one is quite tricky. So it has four different levels of authorization. And you have to start at the bottom. And like I said before, Azure AD is the foundation of everything inside Office 365. So that's the first place where you have to configure it. After that, you have to go a level above, and that's Office 365 group, because Microsoft Team is actually an Office 365 group also. Uh, after that, you have to go to SharePoint Online Admin Portal and configure external, share, external sharing settings for SharePoint Online, so a uh, guest user can access files. And the last place where you have to configure it is Microsoft Teams. And in Microsoft Teams admin portal, you only configure access to the actual application Microsoft Teams. Everything else is configured in the previous steps. And important thing to remember when you're configuring this, there is a time delay. So if it's not working, there's no need to panic. If it's not working after 24 hours, okay, then you can panic and then you can call Microsoft. Okay, let's get back to our administration portal and let's take a look how this actually looks and how do I enable guest access. So the first place I have to go is to Azure AD. And inside Azure AD Active Directory, I can go under Users and I will find User Settings. No. Yeah, here it is, external users, that's what I want. And here I have an important setting, members can invite, and th this one is important. The other ones 
are also nice, but this one, if you read what it means, it means that non-admin members can invite guest users to your Azure AD. And this is like, without this, only administrators will be able to manage guest users in your tenant. And maybe that's okay. De depends how secure is your environment and what are your wishes. And once you configure it here, you can go to the next level. And next level is the Office 365 portal. Inside the portal, you can configure two things. The first one is global sharing permissions. And you'll find it under security and privacy. And here you can see sharing. And it says, let users add new guests to the organizations. You can edit it here. but. Uh, let's say an important thing to note is that this setting here is completely the same as the one in Azure AD. So if you change it here, it will also reflect changes in the Office 365 portal. But there is another setting in Office 365 portal that's more important. And for that, you have to configure Office 365 group sharing settings. For that, you need to go under services and add-ins. And here, you will find Office 365 groups. And here you have two, two settings. Can an external user become a member of Office 365 groups and access the group content? And this is something that you have to enable. And once you're done with this, so you configured Azure AD, you configured Office 365 groups, and the next step is to configure your SharePoint sharing settings. For that, you have to go to the SharePoint admin portal and the old one, the new one doesn't have the sharing settings yet. So under the old portal, you usually end up under site collections. You have to go to sharing. And here you have the options. What do we want the external users to do with SharePoint? In our case, we want to allow authenticated external users will even allow anonymous access links, but this is not something that will be working with today. So I've enabled everything, and the last piece of the puzzle is to go to the SharePoint Admin Center. Oh, are you still here? <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, is this the admin? No, 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 no. Wrong place. OK, let me just start from scratch. I'll go back and open the Teams Admin Portal. So the last place to configure external access, and this is for the Teams app only, because if you enable all the previous step, the external app, the user can already access SharePoint and Office, Office 365. And here in the Microsoft Teams Admin Center, you have organization-wide settings, you have guest access, and here you need to allow guests in Microsoft Teams. So once you do this, you will be able to in invite guest users. Here it's already enabled because it takes 24 hours. And you also have an option to customize what your guests can do in chat and channels. Maybe you don't want them, I don't know. Don't use GIFs, that, that's okay, that's annoying. And once we've done all that, we can actually invite external users to join our team. And let's give it a try. So we'll go back inside our Teams application. And once I click on the team, I have an ability to add members. And here, I can enter an email from anyone inside my organization, but I can also add an email from external users. And here, I will invite myself. And the system recognizes that I'm a guest. I just add myself. and. That's it. I will receive a notification email inviting me to join. And the email should arrive shortly, so let's take a look at the email. So I'm switching to my other browser where I'm logged in with my credentials. And here it is, my invitation. And this is how it looks like. So notice that I'm here with my Syskit account. And yes, Mod added you to the webinar team. 
and all I have to do is open it and I'll use the web app and it's pretty simple so I'm a guest user and I joined a Microsoft Teams channel in another organization it does take a couple of seconds and here it is I can see all the all the teams that I'm a member of and of course I can say hello okay that's how a guest user works another thing that I can do is that I maybe I don't want to share an entire team and give it access to everything including the chat maybe I just want to share a single file from the team and to do that I can do it from SharePoint so if I go to SharePoint so once again I'm back with my organizational account and if I share a document here and I'm going to share it with a different account this time not a syskit account let me just copy paste it so that I make a typo and this time I'm sharing it with a Gmail and now specific people and I get a warning that this account is outside of your organization that's okay I'm going to send this and why am I showing this because if you share a single document then the account that has the document shared is not a member of the guests and you will not be able to detect this kind of access in the admin portal so I've sent it to my Gmail let's check if it has arrived uh, important thing to note it tends to end up in spam so Microsoft and Google not best friends seems and here we go all I have to do is click I want to open this document it has been shared with me and that's it I can access it but only a single document not the entire teams okay so you've seen me shared content from this team with two different users and the question now would be how can I detect who has been shared with what so guest users they work in let's say different ways so the first one would be that you can go to the actual teams admin center and here you can find your team and I want to find all the guests inside my team and it takes some time to load and the interesting thing is that here I see my team but I see only one guest and that's only the guest that has full access to my team even if I go to the main admin center and go to the external users part I have guest users you will not see my Gmail and this is one of the let's say problems with the built-in experience with the uh, guest users because there is no way to detect this kind of sharing and let's say that there, there is no built-in reporting to detect external sharings at the document level there is a small let's say cheat that you can do once you're on the Microsoft site you can access something that's called a user information list if, an, if I access it for my Microsoft team I can see that here I will I will see the external user that was using the Gmail so the the problem with this is that you have actually have to learn this part of the URL by heart that's like the only way you can get to this page there is no built-in navigation so you could land here and the other way with which you could discover external sharing on your documents is to write some PowerShell and use some CSOM so I will show you a quick example how this can be done 
So as you can see here, this is a small PowerShell script. It basically uses C some DLLs. It uses a username and password. And let's just fix this. So this is the SharePoint site of the Microsoft Teams. And all you have to do is create a con client context used to connect. You have to get, get the web object. And once you have the web object, you have to get a collection of all site users. And users which are uh, external users will have one of these flags, S2. And if you execute this, yes, that's okay. You will get the results and you will be able to detect all external users. So as you can see here, I have detected my Syskit account, but I have also detected my Gmail, which has only access to a single document. Okay, and oh, I went a little bit too far. The conclusion for the first part of this webinar would be that you have to plan your usage scenarios and educate your users how to use Microsoft Teams. If you want to use guest access, you have to be extremely careful. Uh, the next thing is that you have to plan for self-service. You definitely want to avoid things like naming conventions, uh, naming conventions, uh, content duplication, and having your data classified correctly. You also want to isolate your sensitive content from guest users. We didn't talk about this much, but if you have sensitive content, put it on a different site collection, on a different site which doesn't have the option to share externally. And even with that all in mind, it's always good to restrict guests to pre-approved emails. So that's an additional option. We didn't show it, but you have an option to specify which email domains are allowed to be guest users. And that's quite handy. And the last two are pretty much a golden rule. You, you have to stick to them always. Follow the principle of least privilege and Monitoring and reporting is essential if you want to keep a check what's happening with your environment. And now I'll be handing it over to Mario and he will show you how Syskit Security Manager can help you answer some of the questions and detect all the users. Okay, thank you, Mattia. Okay, just to summarize what we saw for now, uh, Matthias showed uh, how to create a team and what happens in SharePoint when you do this. And he also showed uh, how to enable guest access and how to share with guest users. And we saw uh, some tasks are very hard to accomplish in Office 365, like uh, see which files are shared with whom across your teams, and uh, who are your guest users and what is shared with them. Now I'll show you uh, how our tool, uh, Syskit Security Manager, can help you uh, solve these problems. So first, just a few words uh, about Syskit Security Manager. Uh, it's a tool uh, which can help you with uh, reporting and managing, managing uh, SharePoint permissions, both online and on-prem. And uh, so you can very easily see who has access to what across all your site collections, Office 365 groups, Microsoft Teams, and OneDrive accounts. So uh, let's now see how a security manager can help you with Microsoft Teams. Okay. Uh, okay, here it is. So when you install uh, the application, uh, first thing uh, you need to do is to connect to the tenant, of course, and I will connect to the same tenant Matia used uh, in the demo. Okay, need to enter username, password, and it shouldn't take long. Okay, working on it. Uh, 
and in a few seconds okay is discovering site collections in the tenant okay here are the list of site collections but for this demo i will select just this one next uh, uh, application is scanning for office 360, 365 groups and teams and now i will connect just to a few teams and groups uh, let's select few one okay that's enough next uh, i'll skip one drive for now and summary page finish and that's it we have connected to uh, some of the teams in our tenant you can see here four of total of 10 teams and first thing uh, I will do now is take a snapshot. This is actually a state of the environment at one moment. And this is necessary for creating some powerful and cool reports, which uh, I'll show you later. So let's do it. Okay. Okay, you see here a nice uh, health uh, check uh, over the screen, but uh, we will focus uh, on the Microsoft Teams now. So let's drill down to the Teams. And here we can see a list of Teams we added and some basic info about them, like privacy. You see the team that you created and the date when the team was created. Uh, you can also see which Teams are archived. And you can see uh, global settings for the uh, tenant level team settings. So, for example, you can see, uh, okay, it will be in a few seconds. For example, you can see that uh, guest access is allowed uh, on the tenant level. Uh, when you click on the team, you can, of course, see owners, members, and uh, owners, members, guests, and channels. You can also uh, check and update team settings uh, for now I will just close this and move to the more interesting part uh, so let's navigate to the underlying site collection to see what uh, is happening on the SharePoint so we jumped to the SharePoint Explorer and we can see a list of site collections and expand it and see the whole structure from the site collection level to the document level. We can see uh, that in documents uh, library there are folders for each channel Matia created before and when we click on some of them on the right side we can see uh, who has permissions uh, on that team? We, these are SharePoint groups, same as the as Matthias showed uh, in the SharePoint permissions. We can expand it, and we can see uh, Office 365 group inside, and we can also expand these groups and see who are members of these groups. Okay, so let's go deeper and expand more we, we see now uh, a little red dot on this document and this indicates that uh, permission inheritance is broken on that document and when we click here uh, we see something is different in permissions and we see that specific people with a sharing link can access this document and we, if we expand it, we see our guest user here. So uh, that's uh, uh, this and uh, now if, if you want to see in one place uh, who has access to which files across your team, we have also uh, report for that we can go to the our reports uh, section and we have permission metrics reports 
and now snapshot is finished and we can choose it okay I will choose my team in the filter list items generate and in a few seconds I can get uh, the report the all hierarchy of uh, the site collection from the top down and for each file uh, I can see who has access to them and which access for example we can see that this external user uh, is granted contribute permission level and this can be very useful for example if you are global admin and you want to send this uh, to the team owner you can export this permission metrics okay and that's it and this uh, file you can very easily send to the team owner okay uh, so uh, if you want to only see which files are shared externally you can do this uh, using our externally shared content metrics report so for this uh, for this team uh, it shows only uh, guest members so you can see Mattia and here you can see that uh, on this file uh, Mattia created uh, a link and shared with uh, this uh, Gmail account uh, another cool report we have here is uh, teams with guests so uh, Mattia showed that uh, it's very hard to see which, uh, who are guest users in, in your teams you need to use PowerShell or some custom URL and this report will show you all the users in your teams not just only the users uh, who are added as members but also users uh, with whom is shared uh, the specific file and if you want to know uh, uh, which file is shared in them you can directly from here uh, switch to the user permission details and this will navigate to the uh, another report and you can see permission details for this user and see that user has uh, access to the to this file okay another one report which i want to show you is uh, team level settings i showed before that you can see uh, team level settings for a specific team but uh, on in this report uh, you can see all the settings for all teams in one place you can also export this and get a nice view where Okay, where you can compare the differences between teams so Mattia change one setting uh, it's not here okay never mind okay uh, okay uh, another thing uh, user permission details I show before you can see for some specific user where he has access across one team or across all your uh, all, all, all your environment so uh, that's uh, in short how uh, Syskit uh, security manager manager can help you with uh, reporting and managing uh, Microsoft Teams and one uh, info for the end uh, this version is uh, not officially released yet it's a new version which will be will be available uh, next week so stay, stay tuned and hope you will try it okay so questions uh, if you don't mind, Mario, I will okay. handle the questions. What? I can see that we have a couple of questions. So the first one is, can I limit tenant guests at a team level? 
And the answer is, yes, you can. It's a little bit more complicated, and you have to do it through PolishShell, but you can. Uh, the second one is, do you need a license for your guest users inside Microsoft Teams? And the answer to that one is uh, no. You do not need any licenses for your guest users. Uh, as far as I know, you can have an unlimited number of guests, but they do not have full functionality. And the last one is, is, is there a difference if I share to a guest with an Office 365 subscription with a Gmail account? And the, the only difference that I know is if you check it under uh, your Azure AD, uh, that the one with the Gmail will actually have to create an account inside your Azure AD and you will be able to see it as an uh, invited user. That's the only difference that I know. And that's it for questions. So thank you all for attending our webinar. I hope I'll see you again in one of our future webinars. And that's it from us.